Dolphins fans, welcome into Dolphins today. I am Will Scott, and on today's show, we're taking a look at some Dolphins news and rumors leading up to NFL for agency. For agency begins next week, and it get crazy, and we certainly have some rumors to discuss on today's show. And subscribe because we bring you daily Dolphins news and rumors videos. And if there's any time to subscribe, it's right now with Fradency coming up. So go down, subscribe to the channel right now. Turn on your notifications as well to stay in the loop with our channel and to stay in the loop with the fans. Today's show, all about some news and rumors surrounding the Miami Dolphins. And the Dolphins right now over the cap, they need to clear cap space before Fradency begins. And they have made a big move today in order to do that. They have restructured Bradley Chubb's contract, clearing $14.66 million in cap space. So right now, after this contract restructure, and this was something that was expected to happen, restructuring Chubb's contract, the Dolphins are now roughly $1 million over the cap. And you might say, well, what about the Byron Jones cap space that was cleared? Uh, well, that was a post-June 1 cut designation. Uh, so that money is not going to be freed up technically until June 1st. So right now, even after this, the Dolphins are still a little bit over the cap. Now here are some other moves that the Dolphins could make to clear cap space. They could restructure Tyree Kill's contract, clear about $11 million. I do expect that to happen here very soon. They also could trade Emmanuel Logba or Cedric Wilson. Those are two trade candidates right now for Miami, and they could extend Christian Wilkins, and that should happen sooner rather than later, hopefully. So after the Bradley Chubb contract restructure, I would look for those things to happen. I was reading an article the other day that mentioned maybe releasing Jason Sanders to save $3 million, uh, but I don't expect the Dolphins to do that. What will the Dolphins do next to clear more cap space? Go down in the comments section. Let me know. Honestly, I, I think they're going to trade Cedric Wilson here pretty soon. Uh, do not be shocked if Ced gets traded over the weekend uh, because he just did not have a huge role in this Dolphins offense uh, last year. A move they made recently to clear cap space was releasing tight end Seathan Carter earlier this week, clearing over $2 million in cap space. Seathan did not play after week one. Uh, he suffered a very serious concussion, did not play the rest of the season. So hopefully Seathan gets healthy and has success. Uh, with his next team, but taking a look at the updated tight end depth chart, uh, Seathan Carter uh, is no longer going to be on this list. Tanner Connor, though, uh, is a name to watch here. Maybe he'll get more involved. Adam Shaheen is a free agent. Of course, uh, that trade to Houston got uh, canceled because uh, he failed his physical, but he did not play it all this season with Miami after being placed on IR after the trade uh, did not go through. Mike Kosicki, we're expecting to lose him in free agency. Durham Smythe might have a bigger role next year. And then Hunter Long might as well. So it'll be interesting to see what the Dolphins do here. They currently have five tight ends. Uh, well, I guess just three tight ends technically on their roster for next year. They'll probably go out and sign a tight end here in the coming weeks. You're hearing some rumors uh, that maybe Dalton Schultz will be a guy that they go after. But again, some moves, some other moves Miami could make restructuring Tyreek's contract. He's owed about $30 million this next year. A trade Emmanuel Logba or trade Cedric Wilson and then extending Christian Wilkins. So I'm curious to see what move they will make next, but they have to get under the cap, obviously, uh, before they start to sign some guys in free agency. want to tell you about today's show sponsor, Athletic Greens. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's show. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every single day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I gave AG, I take AG1 every morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. I came into this year wanting to get healthier, and starting my year in AG1 has helped me do just that. I take it every morning, and I feel happier, healthier, and more energized. Covering my nutritional basis for the day. Literally couldn't be any easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. Win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, 
then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. Talking about a free agent target now. It could be Braxton Berrios. The Jets released the wide receiver and kick returner this morning. Could he become a Dolphins free agent target? Quite frankly, I think he should be. Taking a look at what he's done throughout his career. Four seasons, 107 receptions, over 1,000 receiving yards, over 1,600 kick return yards, 767 punt return yards. And I think he'd be really solid as a maybe number three or number four wide receiver in the slot, and as a kick return. The Dolphins really struggled this year on special teams. They could not get anything going returning the football. They could not find a reliable guy to return kicks or punts all year. Berrios is one of the best in the NFL, and I think you should sign him. It, maybe if you trade said Wilson, you sign Berrios to kind of replace said Wilson, and Berrios would be more valuable than said Wilson was this past year because he has better and more experience returning the football as a return man. So I do like the idea of signing Braxton Berrios. I don't know how likely it is, but I'm just going to throw his name out there now as a possible Dolphins target. Now, do you want to sign Braxton Berrios? Type S for sign or type P for pass down in the comment section. Of course, we're used to facing this guy. Uh, faced him eight times. Uh, throughout his career, his first four years. Uh, but type S for sign, P for pass. He didn't get cut because he's not good. He got cut uh, because the Jets are clearing cap space for Aaron Rodgers, who appears to be uh, headed to New York perhaps very soon. Uh, there is a report from ESPN uh, that the Jets are on the brink of landing Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. We've talked about this in the last couple of days, and there continues to be more momentum in terms of Aaron Rodgers joining our division in the AFC East. Diana Rossini said this this morning. In the wake of an extension, extensive in-person meeting between Aaron Rodgers and New York Jets brass, including owner Woody Johnston, there's optimism in the Jets organization that they are on the brink of landing the future Hall of Fame quarterback. Sources close to the situation tell ESPN. So if this happens... Here would be the quarterbacks in the AFC East. You'd have Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Tua, and Mac Jones. So the top three, and then Mac Jones. So you could certainly argue that Tua is the better quarterback over Aaron Rodgers. Now, obviously, he has a lot more to accomplish. Uh, Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it. But this would certainly make the division a lot tougher. I'm not arguing that. Uh, who's the best quarterback in the AFC East if this happens? Go down in the comments section let me know. I'm still going to say Josh Allen. Uh, but I think two is right there with Rodgers. I don't think the gap is is that big. But go down to the comment section. Who is the best quarterback in the AFC East next year if Rodgers gets traded to New York? Want to shout out Mike Pouncey, man. One of the best Dolphin centers to ever do it. Maybe the best Dolphin center. Uh, he retired a Dolphin today. The Dolphins gave him a very nice ceremony. He got his aqua jacket. Uh, it's great to see this. Mike Pouncey retiring a Dolphin. Of course, he played for the Dolphins for seven years, then went and played for the Chargers, uh, but he retires a Dolphin today, signing a one-day contract to do that. Uh, and, you know, he's a Florida, just a Florida sports legend. I'm talking about the state because he was a two-time All-American at the University of Florida. I'm not a Gators fan, but I know a lot of y'all are, so there you go, chomp, chomp. Uh, a 2011 first-round pick out of Florida, spent seven seasons as the Dolphins' starting center, 93 career starts in a Dolphins uniform and made four pro bowlers. Uh, one of the best to do it uh, in our generation, quite frankly, uh, Mike Pouncey. Type 51, show some love to Mike Pouncey down in the comment section. Uh, go down, type 51, show some love to Mike Pouncey. Cameron Wake needs to be, Nate needs to be next. Uh, when you're talking about uh, Dolphins uh, that need to retire, Dolph Dolphins legend that needs to retire is Dolphin. Cameron Wake absolutely should be next. What he accomplished in his career as a Dolphin, making five Pro Bowls, playing 10 seasons with the team. And I know there's some reports about things didn't end too well uh, between him and the Dolphins, but you absolutely should bring him back, have him sign a one-day contract to retire a Dolphin. Cameron Wake, uh, being the legend that he is, 
uh, definitely deserves that. We're going to have you covered during free agency next week, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button below this video.